Hello and good morning students. Today we are in the 23rd revision lecture. Topic is tenses which we initiated in the 21st revision lecture. This is going to be our third and concluding part of tenses. In the past two lectures we acknowledged ourselves with what a tense is or what tenses are. We also understood about the use of the 12 tenses. We practiced an exercise filling in suitable tense form of the verbs. Today in this third and concluding part, we are going to look into the last two things given to us in our text related to tenses. So as you see on the board, as per my habit, I have asked a question to myself and the question is, what is the difference between will and going to? Well, let's discuss about these two verb forms. Will and going to are two expressions to express a future action. Well, we learned about future tense, isn't it? But this is also one of the ways of expressing future. Therefore, we need to know the difference between will and going to. And that is what is given to us in our text. The future tense of intention. When you are having an intention to do something. When you are planning to do something. So, how is the future tense of intention used has been explained in the text on page number 92 in the let's learn section. Before we go to the reading of the let's learn section, let us try to understand from the board that I have prepared for you. What is the difference between will and going to? Well, will and going to similarity in usage, that is the title that I have given. If you glance on these two words, you will find no difference between them. You will find it very very similar. Therefore, with examples I have tried to explain, will and going to have a similarity in its usage. Let's see how both will and going to can be used for making future predictions. When you are predicting something, you are foresaying something in advance without having a real difference in the meaning. Well, not having any difference in the meaning where we can use both at the same time. We, we will be able to use will as well as going to in a sentence. Let's see this example. I think it will be foggy tomorrow. So what are you saying? You are thinking that it will be foggy tomorrow. It is just equal to saying I think it is going to be foggy tomorrow. So in the first sentence we have made use of the word will whereas in the second word, second sentence we have made use of the word going to or the going to form of the future tense. Well, so we will find a similarity in its usage. However, we have difference which I have placed on the other side of the board. Will and going to difference in usage. Just the opposite of what I tried to explain. On one hand, when we say we have similarity in its usage, but you can see in this sentence, I think it will be foggy tomorrow. It is equal to I think it is going to be foggy tomorrow. But we have a few points of differences in order to differentiate between the use of will and going to. There are one, two and three points of difference that I have tried to pick up. Will is used to express future actions decided at the moment of speaking while going to describes future plans decided before the moment of speaking. See that is the first difference that you will be able to notice when using will and going to. Have a look carefully, try to read it once again. Will is used to express future actions decided at the moment of speaking. While going to describe future plans before the moment of speaking. So you see, that is the difference over here, the first difference. But to understand this, we require an example, but obvious. So there are two examples over here. Have a careful look. I have salad now. So what are you trying to say? You are trying to say that now you are going to do the action of having or eating salad. Therefore, we can say we are using will over here. I I have. So I will have salad now. So will has been used over here in order to express a future action decided at the moment of speaking. Because you are going to do the action, you are speaking. 
Clear? He said at the moment of speaking, while going to describe future plan. Let's take an example. I am going to visit my aunt next Friday. So you planned accordingly. You are not going right now. You are not saying I will go just now or something like that. You are saying I am going to visit my aunt next Friday. So I hope these two sentences will help you to differentiate between the first difference of understanding over here that is used to express an action, a future action decided at the moment of speaking and a future plan. So future action and future plan are the two different things that have been expressed in these two examples. Another thing, will is used to indicate a prediction based on personal opinions or experiences while going to is used to express a prediction based on present evidence. So you see, we already understood about the word prediction over here, isn't it? To say something, to predict something, to foresee something in advance. Well, for that also we have a difference where to use will and where to use the going to form or the be going to form. Will is used to indicate a prediction based on personal experiences or personal opinions or experiences. So when you talk about your personal experiences or your opinions, there you will rightfully be able to use the word will. <coughs> Whereas in the other case, while going to is used to express a prediction based on the present evidences, the current evidences. Well, what is this? What is the difference? Will be very clear if you see the example. Two examples. First one for the personal experiences, second one for the evidence. I think. So what are you doing? You are thinking, I think the boys will win the game. I am using will. So you are giving your personal opinion over there or on the basis of some experience. Isn't it? The past experience that you have with those boys or your opinion that I think the boys will win the game. There you are not using the boys, the boys is going to or are going to. We are not applying that over there. Well, so what are you doing? You are making a prediction. You are predicting. Well, the game is not over. The boys are not over. But you are saying, I think the boys will win the game because of your personal opinion or experience. Similarly, <coughs> we will be using the going to form when predicting on the basis of present evidence. Look at those black clouds. It is going to rain. So what have we said over here? Look at those black clouds. You have been asked to look at the black clouds or you have been <coughs> given some understanding over there. On the basis of the present evidence, have a look at the sky. What is the current situation? It's cloudy, it's dark, cool breeze is blowing. Okay, so the entire situation and the environment has been created. So that current evidence, current proofs, <coughs> is indicating towards something is going to happen. That is, it is going to rain. Therefore, we are used is going to rain and not will rain. If you say will, it is surety that it will rain. Based on the current situation, the current evidences, you are predicting, you are making a prediction, you are foreseeing in advance that it is going to be. So I hope two examples <coughs> match to the understanding given to you in this part of the use of will and going to. Finally, to conclude these few things that we have understood, will expresses a future fact, simple as that. Will expresses a future fact, something that is factual and going to is used to describe something is about to happen, something that is going to happen. As we said, going to rain. Well, for that also we have two examples. Have a look. The sun will rise tomorrow. Well, if you know the timing, isn't it? We have already calculated the timing. We know that what is the time of sunrise, say it's 6.32. So we can say, yes, the sun will rise tomorrow at 6.32. So you are sure about that. You are not predicting something or you are not, you are, you are saying about something that is factual, is it? On the basis of facts which have already been derived. Otherwise, get back. The bomb is going to explode. So you are alerting someone, making someone alert and get back. Don't stay there. The bomb is going to explode. It's going to explode. You are not saying it will explode. You are not sure about that. So, the first sentence was about expressing the future fact, right? it's a fact that the sun is going to rise tomorrow and the second thing is the fact the bomb is going to, something is about to happen, it's about to happen, you don't know it will take 2 seconds, 5 seconds or it may not even explode, isn't it? So I hope this explanation 
has brought to brought you to a conclusion how to use will and the going to form let us now look into our text given to us on page number 92 to understand the future tense of intention in the let's learn section going to is used to indicate three things as you see the three black bullet points over there intention what is considered likely or probable probability of something happening and the third thing future time when there is no reference to external conditions or circumstances well, let's understand the use of the going to form of the verb in the future tense <coughs> intention with the examples we are going to spend our winter break in kashmir this year so you are having an intention in your mind you are having a plan in your mind that you are going to spend you not gone or you not saying you will go you are having the plan as i just said over here we have a plan so it describes future plans decided before the moment of speaking well so we are going to spend our winter break in kashmir this year one example about that we are going to plant some apple trees in our garden asking a question with the going to are you going to learn french so do you have any intentions do you have any plans to learn french so you are asking a question or to find out someone's intention or plan when are you going to take the driving test so going to once again the farmers are going to grow more pulses this year so all these five examples you see draw the attention or explain tell us acknowledge us with the understanding of the going to form of the future tense as used as an intention as something that is going to happen it's a plan over here the next usage of going to as indicated over here is what is considered likely or probable the possibility of something happening or not happening likely unlikely or probably or unprobable well be careful the ice is going to crack now you are not expressing of a future plan over here but you are only expressing a possibility you are standing say on the on, a, on an ice say on a brick of ice or you are standing somewhere in a ice zone when the entire river has frozen and you are standing on that to take an adventurous experience but someone is alerting you be careful the ice is going to crack so it is going to crack means there is a possibility so what is considered likely or probable there is a probability of ice cracking that is also a place where we use the going to form of the verb three more examples how long is this shortage going to continue a question being asked to find out the likeliness or the possibility or the probability of the shortage of some food water electricity or whatever we're talking about how likely is this shortage going this shortage going to continue so you want to know from someone the likeliness of the shortage of that commodity or that thing look at those black clouds we are going to have a storm a similar sentence we just had isn't it look at those black clouds it is going to so look at those black clouds we are going to have a storm we can say considered likely or a probability based on the present evidences because we are asking someone to look at the sky see how the sky has changed color it's become too dark gloomy cool breeze blowing so based on the present evidences or likeliness of rain happening finally the third one third usage of the going to future time when there is no reference to external conditions or circumstances well let us see the example to understand the <coughs> explanation part or the definition i am going to tell you a story i shall tell you a story so what is being said over here that i am going to tell you a story means i shall tell you a story as i just said it's equal to in the first place i told you we find some kind of equal similarity in its usage over here when no reference or external conditions is or circumstances is applied mr gill is going to be appointed principal in the near future mr gill will be appointed so here you will not find 
much difference in its usage or its in its meaning meaning will almost sound the same therefore future time when there is no reference to external conditions or circumstances in such places also we use the going to form well this was all about the going to form let us see a few examples to still understand further about the difference between the going to and the will filling the blanks with will using will or going to along with appropriate verbs so let's write sentences Hence, 
you need to insert the going to form of the verb and not will. You want to see? We are will buy. So we are going to buy. Going to buy a new car next month. The simplest thing that you can insert over here. Next one. I am dash work in a bank in a bank when I leave school well what is being expressed in this sentence I am dash work in a bank when I leave school so you are trying to convey the idea that when you finish school when you complete your schooling or when you leave school you are having an intention you are having a plan to work in the Bank. So, what is required over here? Can we write will over there? No, we cannot write will over there. We are not expressing any fact over there. We are trying to express the 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 intention over here. We are planning over here that after you finish your schooling, then you are looking forward, or you are having the likeliness to join a bank and work in a bank. So, I am going to work in a bank when I leave. School. Next one, number four. If you help me, if you help me, come. I dash. What are you stating in this? If you help me, it's conditional. But if you help me, I dash help you. I will help you. So you are telling someone that if you help me, I am surely going to help you. So we will be indicating over here a fact over here that if you help me, in turn, I am going to be helpful to you. So we will write the word will. Required over here. I, if you help me, I will. Next one, number five. I know. My parents. Dash. I know my parents dash support me in my life. So, what are you expressing the idea over here? I know you are very well aware of it, isn't it? Something that is for sure a fact that you are saying. I know my parents will support me in my life. So, there is always support from parents. So, I know my parents will and therefore, we do not require the word going to over. You are not expressing a future plan or something. You are simply saying a fact. Next one, number six. Ask me a question. Are you dash? Are you dash play? Football after school. 
So you are asking a question or a question is being asked over here to someone about playing football after school. Well, it begins with the auxiliary go, are you, can I write, are you will play? Can I say, are you will play? Well, that sounds so weird, isn't it? There is only one possibility of inserting over here is the future tense to find out somebody's intention. So you are wanting to know from someone whether the person you are conversating to, speaking to is willing to play football or not after school. So are you going to play? That's the only thing that you can write over here. Are you going to play football after school? Yes or no? A yes no type question. Next one. Number seven. Dash it's no dash it's no for Christmas. So question being asked again. Dash it's no for Christmas. You are simply asking the question to someone. Well, generally you know that it snowfalls in the month of December on the day of Christmas, 25th December, isn't it? So you are asking, dash it snow for Christmas. So a general question, a yes no question starting with the auxiliary verb. Will it snow for Christmas? And do not be saying going to snow or because you do not have the word is it going to snow or something like that over here. Well, so simply by writing over here, will it snow for Christmas? Is the day of Christmas going to be a snowy day? Well, we just need to insert the word will ask the question beginning with the auxiliary verb will future tense number eight i am dash watch tv i am dash I am not dash watch T until my work is completed. So what are you expressing over here? If you are not going to do the action of watching television until your work has been done or it is completed. So I am not, can I write will over here? I am not will watch TV. No. I have only one choice to make that is going. I am not going to watch. So you are showing a intention over here. No matter, it's a negative intention, but you are showing intention, I am not going to watch. The only not what has been used over here. I am not going to watch TV until my work is completed. Well, these were the eight sentences related to the use of will and going to. Let us now look into page number 93 and read about the next and the last topic given to us in our text related to the use of tenses or the understanding of tenses perhaps I should say the sequence of tenses that is the order of tenses how do we use tenses in a proper sequence in a proper order a past tense in the principal clause is followed by a past tense in the subordinate clause this is the first rule that you need to keep in mind that when you write a sentence you have clauses isn't it the principal clause the subordinate clause that is the main clause and the dependent clause so if a past tense is used in a principal clause, it is compulsory to be followed by a past tense in the subordinate clause. How? Let us see with these examples. She said that she was not guilty. Well, the whole sentence got two parts, principal clause and subordinate clause. She said is the principal clause that she was not guilty. We know how to separate a subordinate clause along with the subordinating conjunction or the joining word that she was not guilty. 
Now, when I say these words that she was not guilty, it's dependent upon the first word, first set of words. That is, the main clause, the principal clause. She said. Well, have a careful look about the two verbs. She said has the word said inside it, which is simple past or a past tense. So, in the subordinate clause, what did you find over there? That she was not guilty. Was is again a past tense form of the verb. It has not been said. She said she that she hasn't been guilty. No, we are not using hasn't been. If I write hasn't been, it will be a different tense over here. Well, so we need to follow the same tense that has been written in the principal clause as in the subordinate clause. Another example, he replied that he would not help us. He replied with the word replied is simple past. So we are having a similar tense over here. He would not help us. Would not help us. Would is again the past of will, isn't it? So in both these examples, you will find that the past tense in the principal clause is followed by past tense in the subordinate clause. The first rule to remember and use. But as you read further, you will find out we have exceptional well, grammar has many exceptional rules. Time and then whatever you learn about. There are two exceptions to this rule. The first rule that we just read. When the subordinate clause expresses a universal truth. Now, when the subordinate clause, along with the main clause, contains something that is a universal truth, then this modification can be made. As we are going to read, something that is true for all time, it may be put in the present tense, even if the verb is in the principal clause. Well. Some part of the sentence or the principal clause says in the past, but the latter part, that is the subordinate clause, contains information or a fact which is universally true or something that is true at all times. Then it cannot be changed. Then you can write the given thing in the present tense. As you see in the example sentence, Galileo proved that the Earth revolves around the Sun. So the word Galileo proved is the main clause. That the Earth revolves around the Sun is the subordinate clause. Now here you will find the word revolves, which is in which tense? It is in the present tense, which revolves around the Sun. Revolves around. It is not written revolved. We are not writing a past over there. We are saying Galileo proved. So in the main clause, principal clause, we have a past, but in the subordinate we have a present. That is what has been explained to us as the first exception to the main rule that we. Just learn. This preacher said. So someone has come to preach, and this preacher pointed. A preacher means someone who preaches something, says something. That there is only one God. Well, it is true. That's our belief, isn't it? That there is only one God. That you know, say there was only one God, and now we got. Well, so this preacher said. We are talking about some preacher who is giving us a universally accepted or something that stands true at all times. This preacher said that there is only one God. The second exception, when the subordinate clause comes after than, that is the word T H A N than, it may be put in any tense required by the context. So we have the liberty over here to write any tense in the subordinate clause if the word T H A N than is used, and after that we are writing the subordinate clause. As in these two examples. He helped her more than he helps his own children. We have not written helped over here once again. We have not used the past tense. We have used helps. But as told, when the subordinate clause comes after the word tense, it may be put in any tense. So it is not always present, and it could be any tense required by the context. So we need to look into the context, what is being said, and according to that, we need to choose the tense of the second part, that is the subordinate. Clause. He helped her more than he helps his own children. So someone who is already helping his children, he helped someone else more than that. Therefore, here there were two things that were required: the past context, the past tense, along with the present context. Therefore, we use the past in the principal clause and the present in the subordinate clause. He demanded a higher price than I can pay. Right now, what I can pay? My present situation is the present situation, isn't it? 
So in my current situation or present situation, I am not able to pay that. But he demanded more than that. So we have used a past tense in the main clause. He demanded a higher price than I can pay. So after the word than, the word written is I can pay is in the present tense because that's the current situation. That's the need of the sentence with regards to the context. Therefore, you have to choose the tense required by or tense written in the subordinate clause as per the context or the required context. When the verb in the principal clause is in the present or future tense. So two things being said over here. When the verb in the principal clause is either present or future tense, then the verb in the subordinate clause may be in any tense required by the context. The same rule what we just learned as an exception about the first one when we have the word than. Similarly, here too, if the verb in the principal clause is actually present or future, well not past, I am saying present or future, then the verb in the subordinate clause could be any tense required as per the context of that sentence. So you got to be using your discrete intelligence when you insert the tense of the verb over here. I maintain that she is honest. So I maintain my opinion. I keep my opinion. I maintain that she is honest or she was honest. So is honest, was honest, both can be written over here. One is the present, the other is the past. They will tell you that I haven't done a good job. They will tell you that I haven't done a good job. So here we use the perfect tense over here. Haven't done have plus not plus done that is the past participle form so we use the negative not the affirmative the negative they will tell you that i haven't done a good job so you see in the first sentence it was the present form of the verb i maintain maintain was the present form of the verb whereas in the second sentence they will tell you is the future tense so two examples one of each has been given to us to understand so i hope this is clear to you Finally, we have the last thing to understand about the sequence of using tenses in a sentence. When the subordinate clause comes after the word lest, L-E-S-T, lest, the auxiliary verb in it is always should. That is one thing to be kept in mind. And whenever you see the word lest in the subordinate clause, when the subordinate clause comes after lest, so we have the word lest followed by the subordinate clause, then the auxiliary verb is always should, whatever be the tense, no matter whatever tense it is, whether it is the present tense, the past tense, future tense, in the principal clause. As you see in these three examples, she works hard, lest she should fail. She works hard, lest she should fail. So you see, in the principal clause, she works hard. Where the word works is in the simple present, but we have the word lest and then is followed by the word should. So we have inserted the word should over there or the word should has been used over there. She works hard lest she should fail. Second one, I wrote down the phone number, simple past, wrote, wrote is past tense in the principal clause. I wrote down the phone number, again we have the word lest, then followed by the subordinate clause, again we are writing I should forget. Or I should forget. We shall again we have got the future, so one of the present, one of the past, and third one of the future. We shall courier the invitations. We have not yet done, we are going to do it. Lest they should be delayed by the mail. So once again we use the word should after the word lest, and you can see the auxiliary verb they followed by the word should, lest I should <coughs> and she should. You see, the auxiliary verb in it is always should. The auxiliary verb never changes over here. We always use the word should in the subordinate clause when, when the word less has been used and then the subordinate clause has been written. No matter, no matter the principal clause is in the present, simple principal clause is in the past or the principal clause is in the future. In the subordinate clause, we make use of only one auxiliary verb and that is should when we have the less in between these two things. So I hope this is clear to you. Let us now look into a short
short exercise based on the error finding exercise given to us on page number 94 as you can see there is an error in each sentence identify the error and correct it the first one has been done for you we look into a similar exercise on the board so let's do it together Identify the error and correct it. Let's write the heading. Let's keep it simple. First one, my father assured me that he will give me a bike today. Let's write and analyze the mistake or identify the mistake and then correct it. My father assured me that he will What did you observe? 
but you might have observed i visited the place so we have the main clause containing a past tense over here is it visited is the past form of the verb visit so if the verb is in the past what should be the tense in the subordinate clause first of all let's identify the main clause and subordinate clause i visited the place up to here is the main clause from here we have a subordinating subordinate clause with the subordinating conjunction where where the accident is taking place the words is taking place indicates present continuous isn't it well that's the mistake over here that's the error so let's rewrite the sentence in the corrected form i visited the place where the accident took place instead of writing is taking place we will simply write the past form of the verb take that is took so we will be eliminating is taking and writing in the place of that took in order to make our sentence correct and maintain the order of the tense sense, the sequence of the tense what we have learned so far next what he said that 2 and 2 made 4 Next one. He said that two and two made four. He said that two and two made four. What do you find over here? We have the verb said in the past tense over here. And what is the rule? If the main clause has a verb in the past then the subordinate clause should be having in the past well if i read the sentence and show you that two and two made four again i can see over here i already have the word made which is in the past so it means the statement is correct and there is no error inside it isn't it that's the rule if we have he said said is the past he said is the main clause that two and two made four is a subordinate clause and in both the places you will find the verb in the past therefore you can say that the rule has been met here let me stop you over here we have two exceptions to the rule is it it if there is a past form of the verb in the main clause but the idea or the message being conveyed in the subordinate clause is about a universal truth a universal fact or something that stands true all the time then we are not supposed to write the past over there we are supposed to write the required verb or we are supposed to write the present or whatever verb is required in the uh, clause over there he said that two and two made four there so it made four isn't it two and two when you add it made four and now it doesn't make four it makes three it makes one or it makes any other number no we still say that two and two always makes four and not made four Therefore, we will have to write this corrected in this manner. He said that two and two makes four. So I have used the present form over here. Two and two makes four. Even today, when you add two plus two, it is four. It does not become three or one or any other number. It always remains four. Two plus two is four. So he said that two and two makes four. Therefore, we have to write over here the present and not the past, which is the exception to the original rule that we have learned and what we observed in the first and second sentence. We are moving ahead to the next one, number four. He asked me what I was reading. Let's write the question. He asked me. what i was reading well carefully observe the sentence he asked me what i was reading so here we have the principal clause he asked me and then we have the subordinate clause what i was reading so here if you can really see was reading is the past continuous it means that in the subordinate clause we very well have the past form of the verb but what about the main clause he asked me ask is 
present. So this time, if you carefully see this time, out of the two clauses, that is the main clause and the dependent clause, the principal clause and the subordinate clause, we have an error not in the subordinate clause but in the main clause over here. Hence, we need to make a correction over here by changing asked into asked, which is past form of the verb. Well, so let's write the corrected one. He asked me what I was reading. Well, this is the right way to state or frame a sentence giving the sequence of tense in the mind. Next one, number five. I thought that I can win the race. I thought that I can win the race. Well, carefully observe. I thought that I can win the race. First of all, let us see the principal clause and the subordinate clause. I thought, okay, so it's going to be the principal clause. That I can win the race is going to be my subordinate clause. Let's analyze both the parts. Let's look at each of them. I thought. Thought is a verb in the past tense, isn't it? Think and thought. Think is the present form of the verb and thought is the past form. So, I very well have the past form of the verb in the main clause. Now, what about the subordinate clause? That I can win the race. Well, I am having an auxiliary verb over here, isn't it? Can is the present form and not the past form. Therefore, we need to maintain the rule number one, the main rule that if we have the verb in the past in the main clause, we need to have the verb in the past in the subordinate clause. Well, let's maintain this and write it accordingly. I thought that I instead of can you be writing. Yes, you just did right. Could I could win the race? And this is how the sentence stands corrected in its sequence of tenses. These were the first five sentences. We have a few more sentences. So let's go through it and practice them. I hope you understood these sentences well. Take a glance over it. Okay, let me proceed. The next few sentences. Ram said that he will come on Monday. Let me write this. Well, what is the Sentence over here, Ram said, so we have got the simple past or the past tense, I should say, not, I should not be saying simple part, but just the past tense. So Ram said is my principal clause, my main clause, isn't it? Followed by that he will come on, that he will come on Monday. Is the subordinate clause, the dependent clause. What is the tense of the verb will come? What is will come? Future. We can we write that? No, we can't write that, isn't it? We need to maintain the tense or the order of tense or the sequence of the tense. Ram said that he, you guessed it right, I think so, isn't it? Would come on Monday is the corrected sentence. Ram said that. 
you would come on Monday. So we maintain the past and the past both in the main clause as well as the subordinate clause. Next one, number seven. Newton discovered that the apple fell because of the gravitational force of the earth. Newton discovered that the apple fell because of the gravitational force of the earth well carefully observe the sentence you will definitely find an error inside it Newton discovered so this is the main clause Newton discovered and we have the verb discovered as the past form of the verb followed by the subordinate subordinate clause containing a subordinating conjunction that that the apple fell because of the gravity What's the mistake in it? There's no mistake, isn't it? Discovered is in the past and fell is also in the past. Isn't it? That is what has been maintained over here. We have the past and the past, that's the rule. But exceptional case is to be remembered. When you read a sentence, it is not just about writing the end, it is about maintaining the rule as well. That is, if the information given in the subordinate clause is something universal truth stands true at all time then we have to adopt or write the tense accordingly isn't it so newton discovered that the apple fell definitely is in the past but we are not supposed to write fell over here we will be writing the present form over here newton discovered that the apple falls you are going to write over there falls because even today when you drop an apple it will fall on the ground it is not going to rise up towards the sky, isn't it? So, that discovery is still understood by us. Due to gravitational force, things come towards the ground, towards the earth and doesn't go towards the sky. When Newton discovered that the apple fell, if I say so, if I keep this sentence as it is, fell, it means it used to happen. Okay? In the time of Newton, it used to happen and he discovered that because of gravitational force and today we don't have any gravitational force and the apple was Anyway, well, that's not the case. It is still the same. Let's write it. Newton discovered that the apple falls. So, no matter, we have the past over here, still we are writing the present over here because it is a universal thing that stands true at all times because of the gravitational right. next one number 8 I will go if you will come well, short one but very Interesting one, I will go if you will come. Have a careful look over here. What do we have? We have the future tense in the main clause. I will go. Then we have the subordinate clause, the dependent clause, if you will come. So in both the places you will find a future tense used. Well, did we have any such rule that if we have future in the main clause, we are supposed to use future in the? Well, we don't have any such stipulated rule. But let us analyze the sentence. We do have the future over here, and we learned about this in getting our text. That if the <coughs> verb is in the future, then what happens? We are going to use the tense required as per the context what we use over here. Also, we have the conditional word if, if you will come. Well, if you are using condition like this, here we will be using 
an indefinite present tense and not a future tense. We will be using a indefinite present tense. Let us write it down. I will go if you come and nothing else. This is the indefinite present tense for the base form of the I will go if you come. Remember, this is how you write this thing. No matter if you just flip over the sentence by using the subordinate clause or beginning the subordinate clause, if you come, comma, I will go. Then too, there is no change at all. This is just for your better understanding. If you come, if you are starting the sentence with the uh, <coughs> subordinating conjunction or the word if. If you come, comma, I will go. But then too, we will be using the indefinite present over here, the present indefinite along with the future. Well, next one, number 9. He will start as the taxi arrived. Okay, let's see this one. He will start. Once again, we have the future tense. He will start when the taxi arrived. So he will start when the taxi arrived. So what had, what did we what do we observe over here? <coughs> In the eighth one, we observe I will go. So we have the future. In the main clause here, he will start. We have the future in the main. But after the word when or along with the word when, which is the subordinate clause, we have the verb not in the future this time. This time we have in the past. So how are we going to justify this? Well, let us do it in this manner. He will start. We have a future over here. Therefore, he will start when when the taxi arrived. You can't use a past over there. Okay? Here we are using a future. Therefore, here we will be requiring an indefinite present, the present indefinite to satisfy or justify the answer of the sequence. Therefore, we need to write he will start with the condition when when the taxi arrives and not arrive. So, when you say this, only then it will make sense. Otherwise, actually it will not make sense. Isn't it? The next one, number 9, number 10, I shall ask him when he met me. I shall ask him when he met me. Well, another sentence of the same category, same type, the 10th one. I shall, instead of will, we have shall, and it makes no difference, will and shall are both future <coughs> tense, I shall ask him when he met me, so met is again past over here, isn't it, so we have a future along with the past in the subordinate clause, the same rule we will be observing as we observed in the ninth one, and write, I shall ask him, that is okay, that we can write over here, when he meets me. I will be using the present indefinite when he meets me and not met me. Meets me. So I hope these tenses or the sequence of tenses is now clear to you. <coughs> so we practice 10 sentences. We took up 10 sentences for practice. This was all about the understanding of the chapter tenses as a revision part. Hope this helped you to revise the chapter well. See you soon in an upcoming lecture. Till then, take care, have a nice day and goodbye.